Good morning, scholars, and welcome back to Learning with Mrs. Preby. We are on Fairy Tales, The Frog and the Prince, Part 2, Lesson 5. Today's learning goal is I can orally retell the fairy tale, The Frog and the Prince. Let's take a look at what we've already seen about The Frog and the Prince. We talked about this frog and what it looks like and what it feels like. And in the beginning of the story, recall that the little girl is playing next to the, the forest and her, and her ball falls into the well. And she starts to cry and the frog says, well, I can get your ball out of that well if he would just be my friend. And here he is, the frog's diving down there. And when he gets out of the well, he says, oh, it was cold there. And the, the princess takes the ball and runs home, leaving the frog behind. Here the princess is having a meal with the king and the queen, and there's a knock at the door. And who is at the door but the frog? First, the princess didn't want to let him in. The, frog, the, prince, the king said, well, that's not how to treat people, basically. You need to let that frog in. How did the princess feel about letting the frog in? I want you to think about what's happened so far in this story and, and predict what might happen in the next part of this fairy tale. You might have already heard the fairy tale, but Maybe this one will be a little different than the one you heard. Listen carefully to find out whether or not your predictions about this story are correct. Unwillingly, the princess allowed the frog into the magnificent palace. He bounced up and down, as frogs will when they are very happy. But she only glared at him dreadfully. The princess gave the frog an angry look. Why do you think she glared at the frog? I think you probably said because she didn't want to let him in. She thought to herself, why should I have to keep my promise to this old croaker just because he fetched my ball from the well? Her father insisted, however, that she should be his friend, just as she said she would. The frog hopped after her into the great dining room hall, boing, boing, and immediately jumped onto the table. So, princess, he said, we shall be the best of friends now, with a contented croak, or with a happy and satisfied croak. He began to eat from her shining gold plate and sparkling silver bowl, a bowl is a dish for eating right here. A bowl is also to roll a ball. Okay. He began to eat. Oh, I read that part. Frogs do not eat very neatly, I'm afraid. And the princess noticed how he smeared the food all over his face. Turning away in disgust, she refused to look at the frog or speak to him. But she still felt sick just thinking of such an ugly creature eating with her. How would you feel about eating with a frog? What a lovely golden plate, the frog remarked. It reminds me of your ball. You have such beautiful possessions. What does the word possessions mean again? Yeah, things that you own, princess. It must be nice to be a princess and have everything you want. If I had everything I wanted, the princess retorted, you would not be eating with me. Retorted means to give a sharp response. So she snapped at him. Is she being very nice to him? The frog ignored her rudeness. May I have a drink from your cup? He asked politely. The princess was about to refuse, but her father caught her eyes, and so she nodded. Show me how the princess would nodded. 
Yeah, I know you're shaking your head up and down, but she's grumpy about it, so give me a grumpy nod. Yeah. The frog drank thirstily. Perhaps it was because of that long hop from the well in to the palace doors. Would you like a drink now, princess? He asked, nudging the cup back in her direction. You must be joking, she snapped. Princesses do not drink after yucky frogs. The frog sighed and continued eating, but soon he began to look sleepy. I'm tired, princess, he said. Will you take me up to your bed? Do you think the princess will agree to take the frog to her bedroom? I could never have such a slimy frog in my bed, the princess bursted out. Her father was about to scold her, but the frog beat him to it. Oh, careful, careful, princess fair. Promises are more than air. What do you think the pro frog means when he says promises are more than air? What could the princess do? She had promised. So she ran up the stairs to her bedroom, and all the way up she could hear the frog hopping behind her, boing, boing, and leaving little muddy, muddy footprints. Splash, splash on the castle floor. She opened the door to her bedroom. The beautiful princess and ugly frog stood in the doorway looking at the princess's lovely room, hung with silk curtains, beautiful paintings, and jeweled lamps. A thick, soft, goose-feathered quilt lay across her cozy bed, and a full, plump pillow waited to support the princess's pretty head. The princess left the frog at the door and climbed into her beautiful bed. She wished the frog would go away, but he sat on the floor looking up at her. I went to sleep on your pillow, the frog said decidedly. Do you think the princess will let the frog sleep on her pillow? Why? Or why not? The princess shook her head. No, please. You can sleep anywhere you want, just not on my bed, please. You are just too disgusting, and you will leave slime on my pillow. Disgusting means awful or gross. I want the pillow, the frog insisted. You promised you would share everything with me. The princess pleaded and cried, but nothing could change the frog's mind. <sighs> you promised, he said. And promises are more than air. Finally, she had to give in. Frustrated, she climbed down and tossed the frog and climbed down and tossed the frog roughly onto the pillow, then climbed back into the bed herself. She tried to keep as far away from her new friend as possible. I wish you'd just go away, she insisted into the darkness. The frog was silent for a long minute. Then he whispered, Princess, there's one more thing. The princess groaned. Could I have a good night kiss? I have been very lonely, frog, and you did promise you would love me. Do you think the princess is going to agree to kiss the frog? The princess was so exhausted that she did not even bother to argue. In the dark, she rolled over and planted one kiss on top of the frog's cold, wet head. Now please go to sleep, she begged. Good night, croaked the frog. The next morning, the princess woke to find the frog still snoring on the pillow. The princess watched him sleeping for some time. She began to feel impatient for him to wake up. Impatient means not wanting to wait. For she found that Gross as he was, she preferred arguing with the frog to playing by herself. It was so quiet without him croaking away. Finally, she poked him hard with her finger. Get up, you lazy toad, she said. Is she changing how she feels about this frog? The frog did not stir, so with the palm of her hand, she gave him a rough shove that had sent him sliding off the pillow and onto the cold storm floor of her bedroom. 
The moment his little webbed feet touched the ground, however, the warty frog disappeared, and in his place sat a little prince, rubbing his eyes and sleepily, rubbing his eyes sleepily and smiling up at the princess. How do you think the princess felt when she saw the prince? Hello, princess. Thank you so much for keeping your promise. Who are you? She asked, very much surprised. Why, I'm the frog, he responded. A wicked witch living in the forest turned me into an ugly frog, and only you could save me. I knew that your heart was just as golden as your plate and your ball, and I was right. What do you think the prince meant when he said that the princess's heart was as golden as her plate? Now I'm free of her spell. Look at he looked at her. Thank you, princess. Now I will leave you alone and go back to my home on the other side of the forest. Wait, said the princess. I thought you were supposed to be we were supposed to be friends forever after, and promises are more than air, you know. The prince laughed. So they are. Shall we go play with your ball? And together they ran down the stairs and out into the bright golden sunshine. They were friends forever afterwards. And when they were quite grown up, they were married with a great celebration and joy. They invited the entire kingdom to their wedding, not to mention a number of frogs that the prince had met during his long enchantment. We already, word, we already learned the word enchantment. So enchantment would be during his time of being under the witch's spell. They lived happily ever after, of course, and the princess was always glad that she had kept her promise. So, were your predictions about what was going to happen in this part of the tale correct? Why or why not? Well, there were some surprises for me, but I think I could have predicted that they were going to be married happily ever after because it is a fairy tale and that there would be some sort of fantasy or magic involved. When the princess is being mean to the frog by glaring at him and saying awful things, the frog says, Oh, careful, careful, princess fair. Promises are more than air. What does the frog mean? Yeah, a promise is a promise. It's important to be true to your word. Do you think the princess's father would agree with this saying? I think he would, but why do you think so, or why do you think he wouldn't? He does insist that the princess be the frog's friend like she promised. What is the first thing that the frog wants to do when he comes into the palace? He wants to eat at the table. How does that go? The frog is contented, but the princess is disgusted. What is the next thing the frog wants to do? Yeah, he wants to sleep in the princess's bed. How does that go? Right, the princess doesn't want that frog in her bed. But the frog insists, and she did finally agree. What is the final thing that the frog wants before going to sleep? A kiss. How does that go? The princess agrees. Why does the princess agree to the frog's request? She's tired of arguing with him. And she is also keeping her promise. Do you think the frog is taking advantage of the princess's promise and her father's rule just to get what he wants? I don't know. I think the prince probably thought that the princess was was a good person and she wanted to keep her promises. But you might have some different ideas. 
What happens when the frog slides from the pillow and onto the floor? Yeah, he turned into a prince. I don't think if you got out in the world and you found a frog and can put it on your bed and give it a kiss, I don't think it's going to turn into a prince, though. Um, he is also no, one, no longer under the witch's spell or enchantment. So did the fairy tale ha have a happily ever ending app answer? Yes. How do you know? Because the prince and princesses are friends and they eventually get married. So what parts of this fairy tale could really happen? Yes, the ball could fall in a well. The king and the princess could live in a palace with nice possessions. A prince and a princess could get married, right? What part of this is fantasy, though? I've seen a lot of frogs, but I've never seen a talking frog. Have you? Uh, do you think if you kissed a real frog, it would turn into a prince? No, that's probably... That's probably going to be fantasy. And this read out loud, you heard. With a contented croak, he began eating from her shining gold plate. Say the word contented with me. Contented means happy and satisfied. I could tell by the contented look on her face that she was enjoying listening to the story. So I'm going to give you the, I'm going to name two activities. I want you to pause the video after each activity and think about which one makes you feel more contented. Go ahead and tell who's ever in the room with you. I'm going to come up with my own answers, but you're going to maybe find that your answers are different than mine and that's okay. So if I, let's see, remember when you answer this, you need to answer in complete sentences and you use the word contented in your answer. So reading a book by yourself or listening to someone else read to you, which one makes you feel more contented? I think listening to somebody else read to me makes me feel more contented. Playing outside on the playground or playing a board game indoors. I think playing outside in the playground makes me feel more contented. A sunny day or a rainy day? A sunny day makes me feel more contented. Drawing a picture or writing a story? I know your answers could be different mine, than mine, but drawing a picture makes me feel more contented. Listening to loud music or listening to soft music. And again, your answers are going to be different than mine, but I feel more contented when listening to soft music. We've been working on this right here. These are the elements of fairy tales. Specifically, this one is the Frog Prince, which we started yesterday. We said the setting was where and when. The setting was near the forest, in the well, in the palace. Did this setting change during this story? I could add the prince's bedroom, the princess's bedroom. Uh, when did the story take place? Once upon a time or a long time ago? Our real characters were the prince and the king. Oh, the princess and the king. And actually, we have included the new one, which would be the prince, right? Okay. Our magical character was the frog. Some fantasy events. What are some fantasy events that took place? Hmm. Well, I definitely think the, the frog... Frog turning into a prince was definitely a fantasy event. 
I also think the the frog talking the talking frog. That was definitely fantasy. Frogs don't talk to people. Not like that. They just go ribbit, ribbit, or croak. Like we've seen the videos of the different sounds that frogs actually make. Okay. So magical events make fairy tales very different from other kinds of stories. So we need to remember that fairy tales usually have a happy ending and a magical event. So let's see, what were some of the problems that were in the story? So I think the first problem was that the, the ball fell in the well, right? So she, the lost... Princess lost the ball. That was the first one. Um, let's see, what else? Let's see, I think another problem was that the prince had been changed into a frog. Yeah, I think that's pretty much a problem in this story. So what were the solutions to these things? So how did she get her ball back? The frog, right? The frog retrieved it. Frog retrieved the ball. Now remember, you're not expected to be able to read everything I write here. It's just helping me remember what we talked about. So, and then how did the prince speak? How did the frog become a prince again? So the 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 spell was broken by the princess kissing the frog, right? So when she kissed him, the spell was broken. And what happened at the end of our story here? Okay. Did this fairy tale end happily ever after? How do you know? So at the end of the story, it says, they became very good friends, and then eventually they got married. So it was a uh, happily ever after. Let's see, I'm going to put more details than that. I'm going to include that they became friends. Uh, they got married. And they they lived happily ever after. Conjunctions are a kind of word we use to connect words and phrases. We use the conjunction so to join phrases that tell us what will happen. So listen to this selection about the princess from the read aloud. I will emphasize the word so as I read the selection to you. May I have a drink from your cup? The frog asked politely. The princess was about to refuse, but her father caught her eye, and so she nodded. Notice that in this paragraph, the word so tells us what happened after the princess's father caught her eye. The word so tells you what happened or the effect. Let's listen to another example. It started raining, so we took out our umbrellas. The word so tells us what happened after it started raining or the effect of the rain. The rain is the cause. and Taking out the umbrella is the effect. So let's listen to another example here. We were hungry, so we ate a snack. 
The word so tells us what happened when we were hungry, or the cause. The cause was that we were hungry, and the effect of our hunger had on us was that we ate a snack. So the cause was hunger, and the effect was eating a snack. So listen carefully as I do this one. We have no homework today, so we went outside to play. So the cause is not having any homework, and the effect is that we went outside to play. Okay. I want to take a look at this picture right here. It's going to be... Here we go. In the read aloud, you heard with a contented croak, the frog began to eat from the princess's shining golden plate and sparkling silver bowl. When you hear that, do you think of this kind of bowl or this kind of bowl? I hope you said this kind. This is not the same kind of bowl you would eat out of. That would probably hurt, right? So I want you to think, a bowl is a round dish used to serve food. Do you think that's this kind of bowl or this kind of bowl? Yes, definitely this one. Bowl can also mean other things. Bowl can mean to roll a ball towards something. So right here, this little girl is bowling, and she's going to throw those that ball towards the pins. There should be some down here, but you can't see them in this picture. But there's pins just like this. And the object of bowling is to knock down as many pins as you can with the ball. Okay? So that's this one. Our learning goal for today was, I can orally retell the fairy tale, The Frog and the Prince. So what I'd like you to do now is take a few minutes to go retell this story to mom or dad or somebody sitting next to you, and then draw a picture of the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to having you back tomorrow for Hansel and Gretel Part 1. Until then, have a great day.